Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to a new episode in our Wix SEO series. In today's video we're we'll taking a look at how we can do our keyword research for our Wix websites and I'll be doing this in two different ways. So we'll be doing one way which is completely free so you don't have to pay for any tools you can just do it on your own and then we'll also be looking at a paid version uh, which gives you a bit more insights in terms of what keywords you should target uh, how difficult it is to target those specific keywords and just gives you a lot more insights in terms of what types of keyword you should actually target but before we get into the keyword research please make sure to leave a like down below on this video so other people trying to learn vix seo can also manage to find this video right here but that being said, let's just jump into today's tutorial and hopefully you guys do enjoy. Okay, cool. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is just jump on your Wix website. If you watch the whole series that we've done on Wix SEO, which I do recommend you to watch the whole series if you haven't already, uh, there's multiple videos, more recent ones are more up to date, but there are also a bunch of old videos for like two, three years ago, which are still relevant, some of them. Um, some of them might not be as relevant anymore, uh, but I would still recommend you to watch them as well. Now, the first thing we wanna do is understand what type of content we have on our website. In my case, I created a coffee shop, I believe it was in Brooklyn, it was a couple of weeks ago since I worked on this. Yes, okay, coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn. So that's basically what our company is about. We're just a local coffee shop, simple as that. Now, it might seem very, very simple. You're a simple coffee shop, but the way people search tend to be very, very different, even in between cities. So even though it's in the same country, different cities will have different ways that people search to find what they're looking for. And I want, when I'm talking about this, it's very important to understand that even though, let's say we have two different English speaking countries, let's say the US and we have Canada. Let's say in the US, most people search coffee shop that's what they search for when they're looking for a coffee shop which makes sense but let's pretend in canada for example that users search coffee house instead of coffee shop okay so there would be a difference between the two different countries so let's say you're a global brand and you think ah oh, i'm just targeting english keywords so it doesn't really matter i'm just gonna pick whatever keyword but you have to understand it will be very very different in between countries so it's important that you do research that is relevant to your country to your city depending on what type of product you have if you're a local business obviously you want to target your local area if you're a national business obviously you want to target the whole country and make sure that you pick the keywords that are most relevant for that and if you are a international business maybe an e-commerce business then obviously you have to take into account a lot of different things uh, but that is going to be a bit more advanced if you're doing international SEO. Cool. With that being said, um, as I mentioned in the intro to the video, we're going to use two different tools in today's video. One is free, which is going to be the Google uh, Keyword Planner, which is completely free of charge. And then we're also going to use SEMrush, which is a paid tool. You can get a seven day free trial. I do recommend you to get it, but we're going to get into that later on. We're just going to start off with Google search or Google Keyword Planner. So if you just Google for the Google Keyword Planner, you'll be able to find this page right here. You have to make an account. It'll take a few minutes, but once you have an account, you can find this page right here. Once you're on this page, you want to click on discover new keywords. In here, we can search for whatever you want, or we could start with a page. So if you have a competitor, for example, you could just paste in their URL and then you can get some keyword ideas based on that URL as well. I usually recommend just to go for keywords because it will give you a bit more broad data, but this obviously depends on what you're looking for. If you're trying to compare a competitor, this is going to be the best way to do it. But we're going to begin with keywords. Um, sorry for some things being in Swedish right here. I think I translated it to English. So Hopefully some of it will be translated, but obviously some of it is not, but just ignore that. I'm going to explain you through the whole process. Um, so right here, what we have is what we're trying to target in terms of language. So obviously we can target Swedish, Arabic, Bengali, Bulgarian, Danish, English, or whatever else we want to target. For this example, we are a coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn. So obviously English makes sense. But it could also be, let's say you are, let's say you are a Bulgarian grocery store in New York. And let's say most of your customers are Bulgarian and they tend to search in Bulgarian. Then perhaps there is search volume for that. So perhaps that's what you want to target. 
Uh, so take that into account as well. But obviously you want to make sure you target the right language. It's simple as that. So I'm just going to go for English right here. Then the next one here will be the location. So it currently is set to Sweden, but here you can essentially pick whatever country you want to. Uh, so we want to go with the US. We could make it a bit more targeted by going to New York State. So that will just give us the searches within the New York State. Or we can go New York City, which is even going to be more focused as well. Uh, I'm not sure if Brooklyn is in here. Uh, yes, Brooklyn is in here. So let's see here. Brooklyn, New York. Okay, I can't see Brooklyn, New York. So we're just going to ignore that. Let's just go with New York, for example. Uh, because we are a local coffee shop, so remember that. Um, and let's go with New York City. Let's see what we get. And Brooklyn is part of it as well, so that's perfect. I'm happy with that. Then I'm just going to go ahead and click on Save. Cool. Now we can start with one keyword. I usually start very broad when I do my keyword research. So essentially just searching for coffee shop will give us an idea of what people are actually searching for within New York City. Okay, so we got coffee shop and... Swedish it should be set as English I think it is uh, and this is also set perfect I think there's just an issue with the translation uh, that I did on the site uh, but let's just start with this let's see get results and let's see what we get okay so just searching for coffee shop in the Google keyword planner we already have a couple of different keywords right here let me see if I can translate it to English again um, some of it is still in Swedish, so take that into account. But the important thing we want to look at here is this. So this shows us the average monthly searches for these keywords that we have here as well. So for coffee shop, we have between 100,000 and 1 million searches per month uh, for the coffee shop keyword. Coffee near me, uh, coffee shops near me, coffee nearby, coffee house, as I mentioned as an example, that could potentially be something we want to target. We have uh, coffee shops nearby, coffee house, uh, coffee places. A lot of these searches are near me. So people tend to search for near me uh, when they're just doing their local searches, which we have to take into account here as well. And usually we can't really target the near me keywords. Essentially what the near me searches will pull up. So Google will look at the keyword and understand near me also coffee shop they understand that this is a local keyword you're not lo looking for a coffee shop in L la for example if you're in new york uh, so google understands that and will only pull the results that are in the local area and how google figures that out is based on your google my business profile so if we do search coffee near me for example let's search this in google now this will pull keywords in my local area but as you can see, what Google pulls, and let me translate this once again, um, what this pulls, local coffee shops in my local area at the moment. So what is important when you want to rank for the near me searches is 100% going to be your Google business profile. And this is a Google My Business profile. I do believe I have a video on Google My Business on my uh, channel as well. So if you want to learn more about Google My Business and Google My Business SEO, uh, make sure you head over and watch those videos as well. Uh, but what essentially it contains is the name of the business. We have Wayne's Coffee right here. You have your Google reviews. You can link to your website. Uh, you can get directions. Uh, usually have the phone number in here as well and opening times and the address of the specific coffee shop. And then it will also pull this of so how busy it is usually uh, during certain hours. Uh, but this is essentially what a Google My Business Profile is. And this is what Google will prioritize when you search near me. So for this example, let's ignore all the keywords which contains near me. So jumping back into uh, Google Keyword Planner, we still have a bunch of other keywords in here as well. But as you can see, a lot of them are very broad. So what we could potentially do here is search for Coffee Shop Brooklyn. And let's see what we get for that specific keyword. Cool. So for Coffee Shop Brooklyn, we have 1,000 to 10,000 searches per month. Uh, we have PLG Coffee House, Cobble Hill Coffee Shop. I think Cobble Hill Coffee Shop is most likely going to be a coffee shop in New York. And yes, so Cobble Hill Coffee Shop is a coffee shop in Brooklyn so people are tempted to search for this coffee shop specifically and it seems to be very popular as well with a hundred thousand or between a hundred to one thousand searches per month 
So this is also a great way to understand who your main competitors are going to be. So in here we can see our main competitors as well, Devicon, uh, best coffee shops in Brooklyn. This is obviously going to be a perfect keyword to target. You have Coffee Spot Brooklyn, I believe Coffee Spot Brooklyn, it really sounds uh, like a name of a business, so it probably is. Yes, it is as well. So we can ignore this, but it's very important that you actually search these because Coffee Spot Brooklyn, you might think, hmm, are people just looking for a coffee spot or are they looking for this specific brand? Uh, but uh, as we searched this already, we understand that this is a brand, it's not a keyword, so this is a branded keyword. So you're not, you don't want to target branded keywords because you are not this business. So it would be really hard to rank for someone else's keyword. And just to give you an example of this as well, if I wanted to rank for Facebook within Google, it wouldn't be possible because it's, it's not my brand. So some keywords, even though you might think, oh, if I'm targeting my competitor's name within my website, then all their visitors are going to come to my website. But it's going to be so difficult for you to rank because users are not going to click on your link because they see that it's not that business. So don't try to do it that way. It's just really bad for SEO and it doesn't make sense. So don't get any ideas in terms of targeting your competitors' keywords. But most important thing in here is that obviously you have the search volume, you have the keywords, you have to sort these through, uh, pick the keywords which are the most relevant for your business and your niche. And once you have a couple of different keywords that you want to create content around, it's important that you have pages which are relevant for those specific keywords. So in this example, if we wanted to rank for the best coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn, which I already put on the homepage of our website, this would probably work best or better in an article or like a blog form, uh, form of content instead of just on the page itself. Because if we search for the best coffee shop in downtown Brooklyn, most of the results that we get within Google are most likely going to be articles or Yelp, for example. 28 exceptional coffee shops in New York. So as you can see, this is more of like an article going through different coffee shops. So this might not be the best keyword for us to rank for. This is probably a better keyword for uh, websites like this one, the New York Eater, which kind of recommends different coffee shops instead of an actual coffee shop itself. Now going back to the Google Keyword Planner once again, uh, Arabica Coffee Shop Brooklyn. Obviously this is gonna be more niche and more specific but it also has less search volume, which could be a good thing because if you're just starting your website, it's important that you're targeting not very competitive keywords. And usually uh, keywords with less search volume are not as competitive. It's not, always on, it's not always true, but in most cases, if it has low search volume, it's gonna be easier to rank for those keywords. Now within Google Keyword Planner, we can't tell if it is a difficult keyword to rank for directly on here. Uh, it will show you uh, the competitiveness in terms of paid. So if you're doing paid ads for the specific keywords, it says that it's currently low, but it will, it will not give you an idea in terms of how hard it is to rank for this specific keyword organically. Now, this is something that SEMrush will be able to tell us, which is one of the good features about SEMrush, but you can still do this manually by just searching this keyword, Arabica Coffee Brooklyn. And then we can see the top results that we have. So we have one right here. And again, this is actually a coffee shop. So this is a branded keyword. So I tried to open their website, but it's just too laggy because I'm not in the US, so it takes way too long. Uh, but this website right here, we can what we can do to understand if this is gonna be a competitive keyword is not only by looking right at the results. We have Yelp right here, for example. It's a very well established website. So this is gonna be hard to rank for. We have, let's see if there's anything else that I recognize here. If you're in the US, you'll probably recognize some of these brands. The New York Eater is probably well established as well, which is gonna be hard to rank for. But if we wanted to check this manually, we could copy this URL, for example. Now we can open the Ahrefs Website Authority Checker, which is free to use. So you can check, I think there's a couple websites per day you can check. So what you essentially do is just paste in um, the page that you want to check their authority on. You can check it right here. The current domain rating for this specific website is 53, which is very, very high uh, compared to what your website will have if you're just starting out. So this will give you an idea if this will be a competitive keyword to rank for or not. 
It's also important to know how long this page or this specific URL has been ranking for this keyword, because the longer you rank for that specific keyword, the harder it will be to rank above someone who has been ranking number one for a long time. Now, we're not gonna be able to see this within the free use of Ahrefs, but if you want to pay for it, you can do so as well. Uh, but essentially, SEMrush will give you uh, all this all this information anyway. So I would recommend you get SEMrush because you also have everything you need within SEMrush as well. Now, with that being said, I think we are done uh, with the keyword planner. You have an idea on how you can do your keyword research. So what we can do now is just close all of these down. I'll keep this window open in, in case I want to do an example right here. Uh, but going over to SEMrush, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can get a seven day free trial if you want to sign up. But once you are in SEMrush, we have essentially the same thing. We have a quick search here at the top, which we can search for keywords directly. So if we wanted to search for a coffee shop, for example, we can do so. Let's see what we get. Searching for coffee shop, this is the overview of the keyword itself. Uh, we currently have the information set in the US, but as I mentioned before, it's important that you pick uh, the right location for your business so you get the right data. But as you can see right here, we have a search volume of 90,500 per month. We have a keyword difficulty of 53, which is not that high, uh, but still it is a very competitive keyword to rank for as we have to take that into account as well. Now, what we can do here is go over to the keyword magic tool instead. So I'm just gonna click on a keyword magic tool here on the side, open up a dashboard, which looks a bit more similar to what we have on the Google Keyword Planner. In here, we have all the keywords ranked uh, that are related to coffee shop. You have their intent, which essentially tells you what the intent users have behind these searches. It's not gonna be 100% accurate, but we'll give you an idea uh, if someone is looking to make a purchase searching this keyword, if they're looking for information uh, or whatever else. So we'll give you an idea here. So coffee shop near me, there's gonna be a transactional uh, intent behind the search that you're doing because you're looking to spend money. You're looking to go to a coffee shop and spend money. So that's why it's a transactional keyword. We also have a commercial keyword, which as it says right here, the user wants to navigate brands or services. So this is keywords where people are trying to find something specific uh, in their area. It's basically similarly to coffee shops near me. So the intent here is a bit mishmash between them. Uh, but this will still, as I said, give you an idea. Navigational, someone is looking for Michael Thomas coffee shop. So it's a navigational um, intent behind this specific search. Someone is trying to find out where they are. Informational as well. So MGK coffee shop. This, I wouldn't really say this is informational. Sometimes they're not 100% accurate, so you just keep that in mind. But we'll generally give you an idea of what the intent behind the keywords are. And with that being said, we have the search volume as before. We have the trend line, if the keyword is trending down or trending upwards, which obviously can give you an idea if you should target that specific keyword or not. It would also give you an idea about seasonality, if it is a keyword about Christmas, for example, obviously the search volume will go up towards December and then as soon as January hits, it's just going to drop off right away and basically have no searches, at, uh, no searches at all throughout the year until December comes back on and then the search volume will go up. Keyword difficulty, I'll give you an idea how difficult keywords are. If you have a brand new website, you should generally just try to target keywords are not as difficult, but what you can also do is incorporate a keyword let's say you're targeting a main keyword which is relatively hard to target or rank for but within that piece of content you also try to include less competitive keywords so you can at least rank for a couple of keywords which are less competitive on the same page if they're relevant to each other so that could essentially help you grow up that page and eventually you might be able to rank for those difficult keywords as well we also have CPC in here. So this is essentially how much you will pay for a click on Google if you're doing paid. So ignore that if you're not doing paid at all. We have SERP features. So for coffee shops near me, as I mentioned already, usually what shows up is the local pack, uh, which is the Google My Business. It will show you the map uh, of the businesses nearby. Images as well. I'm not sure why images is ranking for coffee shops near me, but image pack will just show you images which are related to the keywords as well. So this will give you an idea 
of what usually shows up when you search for that specific keyword. And as you can see, most of these are just gonna be the local pack throughout because coffee shop is just people looking for local coffee shops, that's it. So Google understands that and shows the local pack straight away. Cool, with that in mind, we can once again um, search for coffee shop Brooklyn to see what we get. I'm pretty sure we'll get a bit more specific keywords in here. And yes, we do have a, a lot more specific keywords. A lot of them will be a lot easier to rank for. If we also want to exclude things and define our search a little bit more, we can include keywords. So if we want to include any, if we want to exclude, if you want to exclude your competitors, for example. So you can essentially go through this list. Uh, Kam Heng coffee shop is probably a brand name. So if I don't want to have any keywords related to Kam Heng, I can add them in right here and apply. So that way all the Kam Heng related keywords will be gone from the search. So that's perfect. So we can kind of try to clean up the results that we get in here as well. And perhaps we don't want to have any near me searches. So we can remove that as well. Perfect. So now we have a bit more of a defined result for keywords related to our specific coffee shop so we can just go through right here best coffee shops in brooklyn coffee shop brooklyn coffee shops in brooklyn brooklyn heights coffee shop and uh, this is probably going to be a branded keyword as you can see the keyword difficulty is a lot easier and as you can see generally for all of these keywords they are a lot easier to rank for because they're more specific so the more specific you are with your keywords the less competitive they will be Ranking for a coffee shop, obviously gonna be super hard because all the main brands, all the main outlets, all the main authorities on that specific topic will be targeting that keyword. While these coffee shops in Brooklyn or a coffee shop in whatever local area you are in or plumber in whatever area you are in or whatever else type of business you have, those keywords will be a lot easier to target. So once you've made your searches, you can essentially just go through, try to find the keywords you want to target, get some ideas on what type of content you can produce for your website. If we are an electrician, for example, uh, let's just go ahead and try that. So just to give you another example, if you do electrician in New York, uh, we have salary. So once again, we can go back and exclude keywords. So we can exclude everything about salary if we are not trying to create any content about hiring someone. We're just trying to see what people are searching for when they need an electrician. So we can remove salary, uh, maybe we can remove jobs as well and job. So let's just apply that and we can get a bit more of a refined search. Electrician New York, here difficulty 54 makes sense. Um, electrician companies New York, also high difficulty. We can actually see if we can find the less competitive ones here as well. So the least competitive one that we have is New York City Electrician Test, which I'm not quite sure where people are searching for this. Uh, it looks like someone probably just tried to do some searches here, so this might not even be relevant. But as you can see, these are gonna be the main ones for New York. Most people are probably not gonna search for New York in your local area. They'll probably just search for Electrician Brooklyn, for example. So if we search for that, once again, we can see that the keyword difficulty is going down because we're making our search more narrow. We started with New York, we went a bit more specific with Brooklyn. And same thing, if we started with just electrician, it will be very difficult to rank for. But the more narrow, the more specific we are, the easier it will be to rank for those keywords. And usually the more relevant they are to your business anyway, because if you're ranking for electrician, but you're just a local electrician in New York, you're not gonna offer your electrician services nationally throughout the country or globally for that matter. So it would make more sense to target those specific keywords for your area. Once we have searched these keywords, so now we're away from the coffee shop, we're at a totally different example here. Trade school, obviously not, not a good keyword if you want to sell something. Electrician schools, licensed electrician. This is probably gonna be a good keyword as an example. So if you click on the little arrow right here, we can actually get more data on this specific keyword. As you can see, the search volume in the US is 90 searches per month. We also have the trend line here. We have the CPC. As you can see, it's a pretty expensive keyword to actually pay for. And that is because the more expensive the service is or the product is that you sell, the higher the CPC will be. So if you're doing 
any finance related products, the CPC will be very high. But if you're doing coffee shop, it will be very low because you're essentially selling a coffee for let's say two, three dollars. So it's not gonna be really worth it for you uh, to pay $10 per click. Now with that in mind, if we go down right here in the SERP analysis, we can see actually which websites are ranking in the top for this specific keyword. And as always, we have a Yelp here at the top with two different rankings. We have bestbrooklynelectrician.com, we have, we have daveelectric.com, New York government, anguy.com, home advisor, and so much more. This will also give you an idea of which websites are actually ranking for this keyword. And you can easily go from here to these websites to understand, okay, how, do, how does their website look like? What type of content do they have on their website? What type of videos do they have on their website? How do they convert users and why are they ranking number one? So as you can see right here, we could analyze this page understand what type of content they are writing about, how their pages are structured. And generally this page looks awful to be honest. So there could definitely be, if you're an electrician in Brooklyn, you could definitely outrank uh, this website right here with a better design, uh, with a bit more user friendliness, better content as well. And you could definitely outrank uh, this specific page right here. Now that is pretty much going to be it for uh, the keyword research. Now what you will have to do is essentially go through different types of keywords, get some keyword ideas, implement those keywords on your Wix website, create content for those keywords if you think that they deserve their own specific page. So licensed electrician Brooklyn, I would probably create a specific page just for that specific keyword. And then top Brooklyn electrician, Obviously it sounds like it would be a good article. Here are the top 10 electricians in Brooklyn or whatever the article will be. So understand the context behind each keyword. Look, look in the search results and understand what type of content is actually ranking for that keyword and then try to replicate and make it better and ensure that you're implementing it in a nice way that is not spammy and actually gives the user a nice experience on your website and it's actually relevant for that keyword. And that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy and didn't like the video in the beginning of the video, please make sure to leave a like right now. Also, if you enjoyed this type of content, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments or join our free Discord channel, which is also linked in the video description. With that being said, uh, thanks for watching once again, and I'll see you guys in the very next episode.